Hi everyone, my name is Mingran. Today I will introduce Jotic, enabling energy efficient, future proof analytics on low power wide area networks. Low power wide area network is an emerging network technology that offers long range and low power communication. This technology provides opportunity for many applications, such as industrial monitoring, smart city, and smart farming. Among all these applications, low power sensors are collecting and transmitting important information to the base station. Due to the power constraint, sensors today either communicate occasional short samples or predetermine summary statistics. Let's consider a solar farm example. A company wants to deploy a wireless sensor network on farm to monitor solar power production. And the sensors are used to send daily report on energy generated. Once the sensors are programmed and deployed, the company may also be interested in collecting new statistics, like detecting power outage and recording weather events. Today, it is challenging to support such general analytics in a low power manner. The operators have to decide which set of analytics tasks need to be supported before deployment. If we want to add new tasks at runtime, there will be additional communication and energy overhead. To support such general analytics in a low power manner, we have three system design goals. The first one is generality. We want our system to support the estimation on multiple statistics at the same time, and even support possibly unforeseen statistics for future requirements. The second system design goal is to provide high fidelity. For example, we want an at most 5% error rate for all statistics of interest. The third system design goal is to guarantee energy efficiency. We want to support multi-year sensor deployments. For example, a five-year execution on a single battery charge. There are several existing solutions trying to address this problem. However, all of these existing solutions have its own limitation. Subsampling could reduce energy consumption by transmitting a subset of the original data. But this approach leads to blind spots and cause a lower fidelity. Lossless compression could guarantee accuracy and generality, but the compression ratio is typically low and it is hard to achieve a significantly longer battery life. Lossy compression can extend battery life, but there will be a large amount of information loss and results in lower accuracy. Sparse recovery could guarantee energy efficiency and accuracy under certain circumstances, but it makes assumption about the sparsity of the original data and thus loses generality. Data-centric aggregation also loses generality, as it makes assumption about the network topology and spatial correlation of the raw data. To this end, we present Jotic, a framework to enable energy-efficient, future-proof analytics on LP1s. Jotic is built upon recent theoretical advances in universal sketching. Universal sketching algorithm can support the estimation on a broad class of statistics and has no requirements on the raw data and network topology. This property enables Jotic system to support general, accurate, and energy efficient analytics on sensors. And we will show in the evaluation part that compared to prior approach, Jotic provides better energy accuracy trade-off for future-proof analytics. The outline of this talk is as follows. After motivation, I will go through Jotic system workflow and challenges. Then I will introduce our system design ideas. Finally, I will introduce system implementation and evaluation and give the conclusions. Here is the workflow of Jotic system. And let's consider Jotic working in the solar farm example. Before deployment, Jotic will run an automatic configuration process to determine sketch-related parameters based on user's requirement. During runtime, 
the solar sensor will run our practical realization of universal sketching algorithm and generate sketch summaries from raw sense data. The sketch summaries are then transmitted to the base station through wireless communication, and the user can then query different statistics at the base station. For example, the user can query energy generated, power outage, and weather events. If the user later realizes some new statistics of interest, the user can get the estimation right away at the base station without the need to communicate with the solar sensor again. Before I talk about the challenges of Jotic system, I would like to give some background knowledge on universal sketching. Sketching algorithms are a class of algorithm that use a small data structure to maintain certain characteristic of the large original data. And we can later use this small sketch structure to estimate the certain characteristics. For example, count mean sketch serves as a frequency table of events in a data stream. Compared to this customized sketching algorithm, universal sketching is an algorithm that can support the estimation on a broad range of statistics with a single data structure. This explains why universal sketching is a promising solution for Jotic system, as universal sketching algorithm has theoretical accuracy guarantee for a class of statistics, we can use a single sketch summary to estimate many already known or even possibly unforeseen statistics at the same time. This property enables Jotic system to support general and future-proof analytics on low-power sensors. The table in this slide show how the estimation task in solar sensor match the statistics supported by universal sketching. In addition to this already known task, universal sketching is also able to support unforeseen tasks in the future with the same compact summary from sensors. To better understand how universal sketching algorithms work, let's first take a look at the data structure used in universal sketching algorithm. It is a multi-layer data structure and each input data will update several or all layers of universal sketches. For each layer in universal sketches, it contains sketch counter arrays for input data to update. It also contains a heavy heater's heap to store the most heaviest elements in that layer. Now I will show you how the universal sketching algorithm works. The process for a sensed value k update a single layer of universal sketches is as follow. For each sense value k and for each row of counters, there is an independent hash function h to identify the location to update. For example, for the first row, we use hash function h1 to identify a location to update. And for the second row, we use hash function h2 to identify another location to update, and so on. After all the counter updates in a single layer, we retrieve the median value of all these updated counters and use the median value to update the heavy heater's heap. Then I will show you how sense value k update the entire universal sketches. There are another set of independent hash functions h prime to decide which layer will sense value k be sampled in. All values will enter and update the first layer. Then we use hash function h2 prime to decide whether k will be sampled to an update layer 2. If k is sampled to layer 2, we will use hash function h3 prime to decide whether k will be sampled to an update layer 3, and the process continues until k reaches the last possible layer. As you can see, more values will be sampled to upper layers, and less value will be sampled to lower layers. Directly deploying universal sketching algorithm on low power sensors is challenging, as sensors only have limited resources. The first system challenge is reducing memory footprint of universal sketches. The native universal sketching algorithm requires several hundreds kilobytes or even a few megabytes to obtain highly accurate results. However, low power sensors usually have limited on chip memory. Therefore, we need a more compact universal sketching data structure. 
The second system challenge is reducing communication footprint. For a wireless sensor, communication is usually the most power consuming part. To achieve multi-year sensor battery lifetime, we need to minimize the transmitted data as much as possible. The third design challenge is reducing computation overhead of sketch update. Universal sketching processes each input value through a series of operations, including multiple hash computations. As low power sensors have limited computation resources, we need to optimize the sketch update process to reduce the computation overhead. Now, I will introduce our system design ideas to show how Jotic deals with these three challenges. The first design idea is about reducing memory footprint of universal sketches. Our solution is called inverted pyramid structure. This is how the original universal sketching data structure looks like. To reduce it, we gradually reduce the number of columns in each sketch layer as we move to lower layers. This results in larger sketches for upper layers and smaller sketches for lower layers. The insight of this inverted pyramid structure comes from the fact that lower layer sketches need to handle much smaller number of samples. Recall how sense value k update the entire universal sketches. There are independent hash functions to decide which layer will k be sampled in. And the result is, 100% of input value will be sampled to and update the first layer. 50% of the input value will be sampled to and update the second layer. And 25% of input values will be sampled to and update the third layer, and so on. Since the actual errors in estimating heavy heaters are proportional to the number of data samples in each layer, reducing the size of lower layer sketches will have little impact on the estimation accuracy. This is why inverted pyramid structure could reduce the memory footprint of universal sketches while still keeping a high accuracy. Then I will talk about how we reduce the communication footprint. To reduce the communication power, we need to compress the sketch data structure before transmission. It is important to use lossless compression techniques as we need the exact sketch information to accurately estimate the statistics. There are two components in universal sketches, namely sketch counters and heavy heaters. I will separately discuss how we compress these two components. Our method to compress sketch counters derives from the observation that in a certain sketch, only a small portion of the counters tend to have large values. As a result, we can compress the sketch counters by assigning different base size to each counter. Specifically, Jotic assigns two extra bits as prefix to indicate four levels of counter lengths. For example, for values requiring 8 bits, we prevent 0, 1, resulting in a total of 10 bits instead of the original 16 bits, as value 228 showing in the example. For values requiring 16 bits, we prevent 1, 1, resulting in a total of 18 bits. You may ask that for a 16 bit size value, we need 18 bits after compression, resulting in using more bits. However, it is very unlikely for a well-conditioned sketch counters to have a large number of such values. And in the evaluation part of our paper, we show that although this compression scheme appears very simple, it outperforms several of the most prevalent lossless compression schemes. Another component in universal sketches is called heavy heaters heap, and is structured as key value pairs. As the heap values are just estimates, yielded by the sketch counters. So it is sufficient to reconstruct a heap with heap keys and sketch counters. Therefore, Jotic only transmits heap keys when sending data and leaves the task of reconstructing heap values to the base station. The third design idea is to reduce computation overhead. To reduce the computation overhead, we need to first understand the computation bottleneck a recent study demonstrated that the top two CPU performance bottlenecks in the universal sketching algorithms are 
hash computations and counter updates. To reduce hash computations and counter updates, we introduce a new counter update strategy. This new strategy can accelerate the computation by two times without decreasing the accuracy. For the native universal sketching algorithm, each input value will update all layers until the last possible layer. In our updated strategy, each input value will only update the last possible layer. When reporting the heavy heaters from all layers, we will use the heavy heaters captured in the lower layers to update all its upper layers. The intuition behind this updated strategy is that there are less samples in the lower layers, resulting in less hash collisions and therefore a more accurate heavy heater results in lower layers. Before I talk about implementation and evaluation, I would like to quickly go through how Jotic is configured and deployed in real-world applications. You may want to ask, as a user without any knowledge on universal sketching, how to tune the sketch-related parameters? There is a systematic approach to tune the sketch-related parameters inside our Jotic system, and this approach can provide users with desired energy accuracy trade-off. Jotic needs two parameters from the user, namely data collection rate and period of transmission. Jotic then tunes sketch size to trade off between client battery life and estimation accuracy. Then I will talk about Jotic system implementation and evaluation. We implement Jotic in C at both sensor and the base station. We use commodity off-the-shelf sensors and RF boards to sense at the sensor node and communicate to the base station. To do the real-world evaluation, we build a proof-of-concept deployment in a campus building at CMU with 10 pressure sensors and one base station. We evaluate the system performance of Jotic and multiple baselines using four real-world sensor datasets. Our evaluation results shows that Jotic provides better energy accuracy trade-off for future-proof analytics. Comparing to transmitting raw data and lossless compression, Jotic is significantly more energy efficient. Jotic extends the sensor battery life by 25 times compared to transmitting raw data and extends the lifetime by 16 times compared to lossless compression. Comparing to compress sensing, subsampling, and native universal sketching, Jotic achieves significantly better accuracy in all tested tasks and datasets. We have tested on two types of lossy compression, canonical lossy compression and transform coding lossy compression. Jotic extends the sensor battery life by seven times compared to canonical lossy compression and given similar accuracy requirements. Jotic also achieves better accuracy than transform coding lossy compression. As a result, Jotic provides better energy accuracy trade-off for future-proof analytics compared to multiple baselines. To evaluate generality, we deploy both Jotic and customized sketches to do four different sets of estimation tasks. The left figure shows that Running multiple tasks on Jotic using the same energy budget will not incur accuracy deduction in individual tasks. The right figure shows that when more tasks are needed, Jotic will perform significantly better than customized sketches in terms of accuracy, which is as expected. To conclude, our goal is to build a general, accurate, and energy-efficient sensor analytics framework our approach is a novel architecture by using universal sketching and provides a low memory footprint, low power, and low CPU realization of universal sketching. We build an end-to-end -end system called Jotic, where system can support general and future-proof analytics, and where system could guarantee a more than five-year sensor battery lifetime with less than 5% error rate on a range of statistics. That's all of my talk. Thank you.